Assalamu alaikum youtubers welcome back to SLK Tools here in this section we'll be just designing a singly reinforced concrete beam designing up singly reinforced concrete beam is quite simple and straightforward say how let's go little in detail first of all let me just explain the design process right and of course I'll design this beam just in seven steps the step one will be just a determination of design load or WU. Then we'll just determine the design moment or MU. Of course, in third step, we'll just calculate the amount of reinforcement or the reinforcement ratio, also known by rho or psi, right? And then we'll just calculate the size of beam. Remember, the size means just the breadth and the depth of the beam. And this is quite simple, right? And then in five step, we'll just calculate as our main steel area, our longitudinal bars area. And then we'll just determine the number of main bars, right? And of course, at last, we'll just do detailing check to check our beam is okay or not, to check our beam is according to codes or not, right? And of course, I'll use the requirements of ACI and of course the codes of ACI, American Concrete Institute, right? And I think for better understanding, we must have a few examples. I'll just do an example, right? And this is of course example one. We are just asked to design a 20 feet long simply supported beam to resist dead load of 1.5 K per feet and live load of 2 K per feet, FC prime is 4 KSI and FY is just 60 KSI. FC prime is just the strength of concrete and of course FY is just the steel strength. Just look at the example terms. The beam is just simply supported and of course with UDL just look at the dead and live load it is of course in K per feet right this is the unit. So the beam must look like in this form. The length is just 20 feet and this Q just represent the UDL are the combination of dead and live load, right? Also remember that uh, the, in the dead load, uh, the self weight or the self load of this beam is already taken, right? So we'll not discuss this in calculation. All things are given, nothing is just complicated. Let's come straight into solutions. And of course, this is design solution. Remember those steps, right? The first step was just the determination of design load. And remember, we have only two type of loads, the dead and live load. So you can use a nice specter, right? 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live load. Plug and check in, of course, you can get the design load equals 1.2. The dead load is just 1.5 kip per feet plus 1.6. And the live load is just 2 kip per feet. Do a little mathematics with this guy, of course, you can get PU equals as the design load equals 5 kip per foot. Remember the next step was just determination of moment, MU. Look at the beam. This is UDL, right? And the beam is just simply supported. So of course I can use WL square divided by 8, right? And this is the maximum moment when we have simply supported beam with UDL. Here I just use W, no problem. Here we have Q. This is not a problem, right? The W just represent the Q and the Q just represent the W, no problem, okay? But this formula will give me the unit, I mean the moment just in K feet because the length is in feet and the W is in K, right? I, I just multiply this guy with 12 uh, to, to get the answer in K inches, right? because some things are given just in inches. Look at uh, FY and FC prime, right? So this will be a little, um, I think, easy. All right, so plug and check in MU, the W is just five K per feet. So five times the length of the beam is just 20. So 20 square divided by eight times 12. We can get, of course, the moment, the maximum moment equals three zero 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 inch. Now the next step is just the determination of reinforcement ratio. Uh, just look at over here. What does the reinforcement ratio mean, right? If we have a beam with breadth and depth 
and these are just uh, man steel right and the reinforcement ratio is just the ratio of man steel right and of course uh, the area covered by these guys is known just by AS when we calculate the reinforcement ratio of course we can calculate the number of bars let me get uh, this approach little over here our approach is just the reinforcement ratio and by reinforcement ratio of course I have a nice formula right 0.85 FC prime divided by FY beta 1 and the strain of concrete divided by the strain of concrete plus the strain of steel and of course this is just called are known by rho or by psi right no problem you can call it anything uh, I'll just call where here is a rho so the rho equals 0.85 FC prime is just 4 KSI divided by FY is just 60 KSI and beta 1 is of course just 0.85 and the strain of concrete is just 0.003 divided by the strain of concrete 0.003 and the strain of steel uh, let me just take this guy as 0.009 right so we have a nice ductile beam over here so do little mathematics with this long expression of course you can get 0.012 as the reinforcement ratio which is of course 1.2 percent right now if we have the design load and the reinforcement ratio of course we can calculate the breadth in the depth of the given beam so our approach is just the size of beam now right and this is the next step and for size of beam let me just draw uh, the beam section over here this is the breadth and the depth is just like in this form the epictio depth right this is not the overall height of this beam and the epictio uh, depth just represent of course uh, the distance from the center of main bars up to the upper fiber of this beam right so of course i have a nice thing bd square what's the bd square now we have a long expression right the bd square must be just greater than or equal to mu by theta rho fy one negative rho fy divided by 1.7 fc prime so uh, I think all things are given. I'll just plug and chug in. So BD square equals, I'll take uh, just this guy equal to BD square, no problem. MU, remember, MU was just 3000 cap inches. So it's uh, 3000 cap inch divided by the theta is just 0 0.9. And the rho was of course 0.012. If y is just 60 ksi one negative rho again it was just 0.012 and fy again is 60 ksi divided by 1.7 fc prime is just 4 ksi if you do a little mathematics with this long thing of course you can get bd square equals 5177.875 cubic inches so we got of course bd square equals 5177.875 cubic inches now if we have bd square of course we can calculate the breadth and the depth so easily right i'll do this guy just in table and the column is just the breadth and the depth and the ratio of these two guys and then i'll do just the selection right and of course i'll try uh, the breadth equals 12 inches 14 inches and 16 inches no problem you can try more and more right what if I assume the breadth of this beam equals 12 inches I just put this value in this equation right bd square equals 5177.875 cubic inches just uh, plug uh, 12 inches in this equation we can get of course this guy in this palm divide both sides by 12 we can get of course d square equals 431.489 and of course I just need the depth not d square so putting square root on both sides we can get of course the depth equals 20.77 inches so when we have the breadth of the beam equals 12 inches then of course we must provide the depth is 20.77 inches right so so this is just for 12 inches breadth and what will be uh, d by b ratio 
just divide the depth by breadth right so we can get 1.73 also do the same process just for uh, 14 inches breadth we can get of course the depth equals 19.231 inches right and divide 19.231 by 14 inches we can get the db ratio equals 1.37 and again do the same process just uh, per breadth equals 16 inches right we can get the depth equals and the db ratio equals 1.125 of course you can try more right like 18 inches is breadth 20 inches is breadth and so on no problem and that will give you the depth and the d by b ratio and then now i'm just ready to select uh, my db ratio right over here then of course i can go ahead uh, to select uh, the breadth and the depth of the given beam right and for db ratio we have a nice uh, i think uh, it's better uh, to be just 1.2 to 1.5 if this is given so it's um, i think will be just uh, so easy here we don't have so i'll select the db ratio from 1.2 to 1.5 so let me uh, just help me over here uh, just look at this one it's 1.125 which is of course just less than from 1.2 right so i can i can just select this guy just look at this one 1.73 and this is of course greater than 1.5 right so i can't take this guy too right what about this one it's 1.37 which is of course right between 1.2 and 1.5 so i think this db ratio is good for my, for my design right so i'll say use this guy and my breadth and depth is just uh, 14 inches and 19.5 of course this is just 19.231 so i'll just round this guy into 19.5 inches right so this is my size of beam which is depth equals 19.5 inches and the breadth equals 14 inches and my next approach is the required steel area right or as and the as mean the area covered by these main bars where here I have three, but these are, these are just not actually three, right? I have just pretended all these guys. We can, of course, calculate the number of these bars little late, okay? So my approach is just the area of steel, AS. And per AS, I have a nice formula, just a short formula. The row times BD. And remember, the row was just 0.012, and the breadth is just of course 14 inches and the depth is just 19.5 inches so we can get 3.276 square inches as as area covered by all these main bars now if i have as or ast of course i can calculate the number of main bars i'll do this approach just in a table right and the table column just represent the bar number area bar in square inches the number of bars and then i'll do just uh, some selection right of course i'll try number four number six number seven and number eight the area of number four bar is just 0 0.196 per number six we have per number seven we have 0 0.601 and of course per number eight we have 0 0.785 square inches this is the cross section area of all these bars right of course you can try many other numbers bars okay I'll just try over here just these four number of bars, right? Because this is just a tutorial, just learning. And of course, this is a trial design, right? And the number of bar, we'll just divide the AS. By area of bar, we can get, of course, number of bars equals 17. If you divide AS by area of number six bar, we can get seven number of bars. If you divide AS by area of number seven bar, we can get five number of bars, and so on. Now let me just do a selection right over here, right? What if I use number four bar and the number of bar will be 17? I think this is not good. What do you say about number seven bar? We have five number of bars. I think uh, I'll just think about this. And what do you say about number eight bar, which is of course four in numbers, right? I think this, this, this choice is better, okay? 
So I'll say use, I'll just try four bars and number eight. And this will be, I think, good, right? And this is, I think, uh, so economical. So I'll just try this one. So I have the section, uh, we have, of course, uh, four bars, right? These black dots just represent the main bars. And the die of these guys is just uh, one inches, right? Or it's number eight bar. So I just got a little bit the section in this palm. Uh, we have four main bars and the breadth is 14 inches. The effective depth is just 19.5 inches. And of course, AS is just 3.14 square inches. Now what if I take just uh, two bars for supporting the shear reinforcement and this is just the stirrup or shear reinforcement. So what should be my total height of beam? Because I need the total height of beam, right? So my approach is to determine the total height. And remember, we have the effective depth, right? 19.5 inches. And of course, this is up to the center of main bar. And remember, the main bar diameter is just one inches because it's number eight bar, right? So I'll just add half diameter of this bar. I mean, 0.5 inches. And then of course I have uh, the shear reinforcement. Um, of course the diameter of shear reinforcement is just number three bar. I just assume this guy, right? I think this is the best choice to use number three bar over here in shear reinforcement. So I'll just add uh, one times diameter of shear reinforcement. Of course, this is number three, so it's three over eight inches. And then I'll just assume one inch concrete cover. So this will be the total height of this beam, right? Which is of course 21.375 inches, which means 21 inches and 0.375 is just of course, uh, maybe three suta, right? Yeah, of course, or three by eight inches. So I'll say use 21.375 inches at the total height of this beam. And this is of course our design, right? But I need to check this guy a little bit. I'll just do detailing check over here, right? And the best thing I wanna check is uh, the row design. Remember, which is of course AS divided by BD, right? And AS is of course 3.14, look at the section, just this one divided by the BSG one, 14 times 19.5. So it's 0 0.0115. Of course, it's just little uh, near to our row design, right? We are okay, I think, over here. And the next thing, according to ACI, the row minimum must be just 0.0033. And of course, our row was just 0.012 which is of course greater than 0.033. I mean, we are also okay over here. And the next thing is the row maximum per tension control. And per tension control, according to ACI, when the tension, uh, I mean the tensile strength equals 0.005, so the, the row max must be just equal to or less than 0.0181. And of course, our design row is just, I mean, our max row is just, of course, 0.012, which is, of course, just less than 0.0181. So we are also okay over here. It's good. And of course, just look at the right hand side of the page. This is the given design, right? We have done it. Yes. Let's wait for the next lecture to design in a one way slab, right? And of course, that will be really good. Yes, just look at this picture. This just represents the one-way slab. We'll design this guy, okay, in the next lecture. So for that, just wait. Thank you for watching. See you next time. And wassalam.